Mark 4K is the, the yeah. watchword at the moment. Um, the cameras are out there, the satellites are up there, but the tele full technology for live broadcast is still just, just about coming online, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, we went to the Confeds Cup and we tested some prototype systems for live broadcast, so including camera systems and truck-based systems. And that. So we were able to produce a, an output which got to the back of the truck. Just at IBC recently, we've actually just done a live backhaul as well. So we did a rugby match from Saracens straight into IBC, but that wasn't really on a satellite platform which we could deliver to the consumer. It was more on a backhaul-style test. So it's just coming in. The area that's really missing is the set-top boxes and uh, the capability to bring that image down into the home and then put it up onto the screens because the screens are available as well so that's just the one missing link there. The situation is helped by the fact that the codecs are useful for other purposes too so they could be a dovetailing with the technologies that people are going to want to have about their homes in any case. Yeah absolutely I mean I'm not an expert in the Haybeck encoder but what I do understand of it is that we can compress down the image um, down into sort of HD, sort of 20 megabits per second as we were using when we introduced HD. Mm -hmm. If we were to apply the same Haybeck encoders to HD, mm -hmm. that would free satellite bandwidth for obviously other services mm -hmm. or 4K services coming on board. And also that encoder can be used domestically within the home for bouncing the signals around to other devices that can't accept it like a native 4K. Now all the digital technology yeah. people are saying, well, you know, all very well, but I'm not going to be able to watch 4K usefully on my mobile phone. No, that's that's probably true for a bit yet. I mean, getting the signal down onto the mobile phone platform. Mm. And whether whether actually yeah, that's an experience of that sort of resolution you'd want on that mobile device. I mean, it's quite interesting in terms of tablet resolutions. They seem to have stagnated at a point uh, down below 4K, mm. where commercially it's viable to make the screen, the resolution is acceptable to the user, and effectively the cost to make the screen means that it's worthwhile to deliver a platform. So. Now, do you subscribe to this view that there's a diminishing return in, time, in terms of high definition once you get much beyond 4k the eye can't really pick it up or are we just going to get used to each new standard as it comes about and the the, 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 the headroom is infinite well it's a great question because it gets into what is the native resolution of the human of the eye, eye and then how good can people see I mean I wear contact lenses yeah. so uh, obviously I'm at disadvantage straight away but um, it's an interesting question about the experience people get in their home mm -hmm and how much they, they need a resolution beyond sort of 4K for their own experience. Obviously, if you're talking about bigger screens and bigger and bigger screens, then obviously the resolution helps. Mm -hmm. The other side of 4K is the camera systems are coming in from the movie industry. You know, we're bringing movie cameras into a live environment. So that gives us advantages in terms of color gamut and in terms of the other experiences we can bring. And it's not just going to be about resolution, it's going to be about seeing the image in a colour gamut that's closer to the human eye as well, so what you're seeing on the screen at home is closer to it if you're actually there. Um, maybe even having effects, you know, putting in, so changing the, the effects. Also because the camera's more sensitive, being able to see into the blacks better, so effectively the stadium experience becomes better because you can see more of the stadium as the human eye would be doing, rather than the cameras at the moment which are limited in the way they act in some ways. So I think, going back to the question, resolutions beyond 4K, well, it's going to be interesting to see if it's a domestic environment, whether they're useful or not. But at the moment, the delivery capability for 4K is not there. So those other ones are going to be a way behind that. It's fascinating stuff, isn't it? We could talk all night. Uh, you've been talking all afternoon. A fascinating conference. Sportel's a good venue for this, isn't it? You, you get the experts together, you get the chance to chew the card and discuss the issues and, and, and learn yourselves, I should imagine. Yes, it is. Sportel's interesting for me because usually we do technology shows, so we're, we're talking to technologists and engineers, whereas Sportel's a rights owners, broadcasters type show, and those are the people we really want to understand what do they want to deliver to their end consumer. In other words, is it resolution? Is it multiple second screen environments for people watching so they can have different experiences and scoring and all those things? Or is it a gambit of everything onto your mobile phone, onto your tablet, onto your big screen at home? And that's how we're going to monetize the marketplace. You know, there, there's a big push from the Sony side at the moment for 4K cinema. Those cinemas suddenly become available to clients at 4K resolution to deliver live events to. So maybe you don't want to watch the event at home, you want to go to cinema, watch it in a far higher resolution than you've got at home, and actually with your mates as well. It would be the biggest second screen of all. Absolutely, it would be the biggest second screen of all. It would be very interesting. No one's brought that up yet, so that's a very interesting way to look at it. Wonderful. Well, thanks for talking to us. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for coming to Sport okay. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>